He is ready. Live from Studio C. Welcome to Creative Third Thursdays. Woo! The Chilliwack Creative Commission is gratefully located on the traditional unceded territory of the Stolo people. I am Jeff Edwards. I'm the chair of the Chilliwack Creative Commission's Creative Third Thursdays Committee. And we want to welcome you to Creative Third Thursdays again. Uh, I know you've been following along. You, you understand that we're building a community of creative people starting right here in Chilliwack. And uh, we hold these monthly events we call Creative Third Thursdays here at Cowork Chilliwack. And we record them in this wonderful Studio C in Chilliwack. So please note, for our audience at home, uh, Creative Third Thursdays has a new start time. We start at 5 o'clock now for our mingling session. It's actually a mingling session. I like that. I just, what am I, making up cool slogans on the spot? So it's a, our mingling session starts at 5 o'clock. We have refreshments, and uh, you can join us for a bevy, and uh, it happens on the third Thursday of the month. It's funny how many people say, hey, that Creative Third Thursday, when does that happen? <laughs> It's on the third Thursday of the month. So join us for a bevy and, uh, and, and keep coming back because we always have an interesting and uh, varied crowd of people in the audience to uh, attend this live recording of our YouTube videos each month. So uh, let me move ahead here to keep keeping up to date with everything that the Creative Commission is doing. Uh, creative Chilliwack is our hashtag. If you use that hashtag, you'll pretty much find out whatever's been going on with the Creative Commission and whatever we've got coming up is usually found with uh, Creative Chilliwack. And uh, Creative Third Thursdays is best taken in live, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, again, a big thank you to our studio audience. And thank you to Rebecca, who is representing Cowork Chilliwack in the production suite this afternoon. So let's hear it for, yeah. for Rebecca. So here's what's going on today. You're probably wondering, hey, where is the guest that was scheduled to be our Creative Third Thursdays featured creative this month? Well, it's this, this thing that goes around in the world right now. It's called a virus, and we're all really sort of cognizant of not passing viruses on to other people. And that's what happened with Joy today. So she phoned me. She was pretty sad about it and uh, really, really wants to reschedule. And uh, we will reschedule her and uh, get her back on here. And we, we all wish her a, a speedy recovery, don't we? Yes, we yes. do. Okay, that's it for tonight. Thanks for coming. <laughs> no, I'm just going to spend the whole time talking about me. No. So, no, anyway, uh, the uh, Joy Hall was the, was the featured guest we were going to have here this afternoon. But anyway, uh, what we're going to do instead is uh, bring some people up from the audience we always have these really interesting and creative people that join us at Creative Third Thursdays, and we're gonna bring some people out from the audience and find a little bit about what's going on. Some of these familiar faces you see in the audience when you come to Creative Third Thursday. And the first person we're gonna bring up is Jean-Louis, who is the, the director of the Chilliwack Cultural Center. So come on up, Jean-Louis. You are a rock star for, for yeah. stepping in for us this afternoon. Thank you so much. No worries. So, uh, <laughs> I'm sitting on my keys. That's not good. <laughs> so, so tell us, uh, Jean-Louis, a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm sure. I, you've only been in Chilliwack for about a year and a half now. Yes, I arrived uh, September 2022 and uh, took over as executive director of the Cultural Centre. Prior to that, I was living in Calgary. I worked as the director of the conservatory at uh, Mount Royal University and was also teaching at the University of Calgary and kind of uprooted and came here and just love this community, love what I get to do at the cultural center and just love all the things that are going on. And, um, and the connection with uh, Joy Hall is we do have one of Joy's pieces in our lobby at the cultural center. So if people want to come see that, it's just um, a beautiful piece of art. Um, and uh, the story behind it as well is just uh, really quite beautiful. And uh, we're working with Joy on some stuff that's going to be coming up at the cultural center as well. So there's this wonderful connection. So that's one of the reasons why I'm here, but it's always cool to be at Creative. Well, Third Thursday. I'm really disappointed that she was unable to be here today for you and for, for everybody because uh, she has a really interesting story to tell and, and a two-tiered sort of interest that uh, we'll explore. She's into uh, sustainable and traditional gardening as well, so we'll talk to her about that. But we'll, we'll reschedule Joy and we're, we're really looking forward to seeing her. And We wish you well. Get better soon, Joy. <laughs> tell us a little bit about what's coming up at the Chilliwack Cultural Centre. 
Uh, we're coming to the end of our season. Uh, April 3rd, we actually have a group from um, Ireland coming to do a story called The Very Old Man with Enormous Wings, which is a Spanish story, and it's about how you treat people. Uh, we have uh, Sunsei the Storyteller on May 10th, which is Kunji Akeda is coming to talk about the Japanese-Canadian internment. Um, its tag tagline is uh, the most fun you can have learning about um, the Japanese internment in Canada. Um, and it's really a quite compelling piece. And then we're going to be ending our season with Dino light, so uh, light puppets that um, these people that have done this Dino light um, have actually, or light wire theater have actually appeared on um, America's Got Talent. So we bring in some pretty cool stuff to the cultural center, and that's just us ending our season. And then on May 28th, we're going to be doing our season launch at the cultural center. How, how do you uh, choose who is going to be on your stage at the Cultural Centre? Uh, it's quite a mix. A lot of groups will actually approach us. Uh, we do rent out our facility to a number of different groups, uh, but then also we kind of curate a series, and it's my role in that curation to kind of fill in the gaps. So we see what groups are going to be coming to the city, and then I try and find those things that are going to be new, unique, um, or telling stories that we might not get um, through touring companies, um, the ones that I just mentioned mentioned uh, are kind of an example of, of that. So really focusing on theatre, dance, circus we had recently. Um, yeah, just a, a, a wonderful mix to really embellish the creative community of Chilliwack. And the occasional touring musical act. Yes, those are usually the ones that are kind of approaching us um, for and um, renting, uh, which is which is great. There is kind of this route, and we're along that route, and so we get a lot of those acts. And I have we have some exciting ones coming up next year, but I can't say anything about those. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you just said something about it. You gotta wait until the season you launch. You have a non-disclosure <laughs> agreement or something? Uh, we're waiting until we do our season launch, but um, I I can say that um, our se our Season next season is going to season next season. That's just a weird way of saying it. Um, it's okay, you, you're stepping in. You get away with all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but we're going to be doing our season launch on September 14th for the 24-25 season, and that's going to be with uh, Ballet Kelowna. So I can uh, say that to everybody, and it's uh, going to feature a work by Cameron Fraser Monroe, who's um, an indigenous uh, choreographer, but a ballet choreographer, and so he's choreographed this piece. He's actually also Stolo. And the story Takesh, which is the piece that he's choreographed, is a Stolo story. So it's this wonderful mix of uh, individuals kind of coming together to present uh, what's going to be a fantastic presentation that's going to open our season in Chilliwack. And then to add to that, i um, really excited about having uh, collaborating with Joy to have some weaving, work, um, Salish weavings displayed for part of that, uh, that opening. Very cool. Yeah. So for people that don't know, uh, how do we understand what is going on at the Chilliwack Cultural Center? What are the touch points for us to keep informed about shows that we might like to see there? Um, definitely going to the website. So ChilliwackCulturalCenter.ca. We'll work on shortening that eventually, but <laughs> ChilliwackCulturalCenter.ca, but also um, our Instagram. Uh, we try to be f as active as we can on Instagram. And uh, tomorrow night we have a gothic soiree. So that might be awkward because this will come out after to, after tomorrow, but uh, with uh, yeah. Ballet Victoria, we're kind of doing different home, things. you missed. <laughs> it was <Yes>. fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but yes, Instagram and Facebook and then our website um, lists all of our events. Cool. Uh, again, thank you so much for stepping in with our situation here today. We really appreciate it. And I think we learned something. Perfect. That Wonderful. Was useful, so. Thank you so much. John Louis, yeah. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so while Jean-Louis is stepping off the stage to uh, pass his microphone to Sandra Bonner-Peterson, I will just fill this in a few moments, because Sandra is, is a member of our Chilliwack Creative Commission, and she is, uh, I've known, Sa well, Sandra and I have been friends for I don't know how many years. We'll, we'll get her up on the stage here. She's just getting the headphones on. Sandra Bonner-Peterson, everybody. Hey. Again. Joy is my cousin, and I'm going to kill her right now. <laughs> so, I prefer being on the other side of the camera. <laughs> I know. We're, that's why I said we're putting her on the spot. Okay. But you're so good on the spot. Sure. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. <laughs> So what's interesting about you is uh, you, the pathway that you've taken to... Sandra op operates a company called Bear Image Productions, and... Uh, Yay! Oh, everybody! <laughs> Sorry, I didn't bring the signs. Applause! <laughs> 
so, so tell us about Bear Image Productions. It's oh a, my goodness. You're super busy. I'm surprised to see you here today. We are, we are really very busy. We always are. I have um, a niece who's worked with me right from day one, Dana Bonner. And, um, She's great. I have been in business for 22 years. I started when I was 15. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say about Bear Image Productions. I, I was really surprised that I actually started my own business. It wasn't something that I kind of geared towards back in the day. All I wanted to do was get into video production and come back and work at the Kokolitsa Cultural Center and help them with the show that they had developed that I actually started on as a host. And I was really bad as a host. <laughs> I got to say, there's some things you can do. I was in theater. Ian, right? He knows I can act, but it is a totally different thing to do what, like, what Jeff is doing. And, you know, when Ian put it like, well, you could be a character, then I thought, well, maybe I could use an accent or something, right? <laughs> but, but I don't know. You know, you could be a character, I guess. But, uh, but I found out quickly that it's really hard to interview people who don't want to talk to you. If you get someone who can just go, it's great. But you get someone who just, yes, no. <laughs> and you're going, okay, let's carry this. <laughs> How are we going to carry this? So um, to me, yeah, being on the other side of the camera is something that, that I decided, it, you know, what I wanted to do. You're and then still I was, a storyteller. I think that's a good way to describe what you do. You, you see the story and you put it into a visual. Uh, I mean, you're, you're making broadcast television quality content, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep, yeah, you could you could say that. Um, well, I actually, what, what I what I wanted to be was a voice for our people because I grew up non-indigenous. I'm indigenous, but I grew up non-indigenous because of the Indian Act. If anybody knows about the Indian Act, my mother was no longer a First Nation person when she married my father, oh, so funny. I had no idea about being a First Nation person because mm -hmm. um, uh, we were brought up off the reserve as well. So when I was asked to host this program called Rebirth of a Nation. It actually opened up my eyes because I had no idea there was residential schools. And then I found out my mother went to a residential school. I didn't even know that existed because it was something mom didn't want to bring up, right? Which I get, because after I started asking her more, yeah, it was, it was a very sad time, right? Mm -hmm. And I had no idea that my mom even suffered that because she wouldn't share that with us. She said, what I saw in there I said, I'll never do to my children. So mm -hmm. I was like, right on, mom. And then I started learning more and more about my culture. And I realized, hey, I am a First Nation person. I went to school growing up, Walitam, white. And I had no idea. Now I do. And in the industry that I'm in and what I'm doing, I feel like I'm a voice for our people. And I feel like I'm learning my culture more and more. And uh, Joy with her weaving, who should be here talking right now. <laughs> Her, it's incredible, you know, the things that I'm, I'm learning myself about mm -hmm. my own culture. So. And you are continually learning. I mean, you, you're, you're, you're progressing technologically with your mm -hmm. company. You're, you're yeah. taking on new equipment all the time. That's, yeah. that's an important part of what it is to be in, as, a, as a person that creates content, right? I mean... Uh, you know, it's, it's really wild. We just worked with a, a young fella today um, who is going to GW. And I thought you know, I think I could learn things off of him because these young kids and what they know is incredible. And with myself, yeah, I've been kind of self-teaching myself to do a lot of these, these things. And I look it up on YouTube, which is what a lot of us probably do, um, to figure out, you know, how to run this camera and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, think, I think I've been a... I always think that I'm not really hugely successful, but then at the same time I look and go, eh, I guess I'm doing okay. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with my life, you know. And You are doing fabulously, and you're yeah. a wonderful uh, friend and uh, a great contributor to this community, and, 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 I, and I promised I wouldn't keep you on the I know, and I'm long. like, don't so, do it, don't do it. But. Sandra Bonner-Peterson, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Nettie Tam is our next guest. She is uh, with the Chilliwack Economic Partners Corporation. She, I think the title I last remember is Manager of Business Development for the Chilliwack Economic or Business in Chilliwack. Let's have her come up and explain exactly what it is you do. Right. Nettie Tam, everybody. Thanks for doing this, Nettie. We really appreciate you stepping in. 
Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> I'm always behind the scenes, so this is putting really putting me on the spot. <laughs> I, I think I think we met about 2007. I think I met you, and uh, that's when I joined the Chilliwack Creative Commission. So, Nettie, describe a little bit about what brought you to Chilliwack. Well. First, I'm gonna. My title is actually manager of economic development. Manager. Oh, sorry about that. That's all good. I was close. So, I was close. So I came to um, Chilliwack in 1999, and I came to um, actually part of SEPCO, part of the downtown revitalization process. So I was a conduit to the BIA. So I was executive director of downtown Chilliwack BIA for five and a half years, working towards the strategy towards revitalization. And it's amazing what we're seeing today in downtown Chilliwack, especially with what's happening with 1881 and all the surroundings and some of the things that uh, SEPCO has facilitated. So it's been a really journey for me. And then after the BIA kind of kind of went lateral and been with, with SEPCO be 25 years this year. Congratulations. Nice. Yeah. And, and you've been right there in some major, like you say, 1881 is just one of the things you've been involved with. You are uh, at every creative commission meeting, Nettie is there, and she's making you know, passionate input as to what we do with our creative commission. And uh, um, think that you, you, you bring something to the table that we, every time there's something that, that Nettie's got that, that she brings to the table. So we, we appreciate what you do for us as a creative commission. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, the volunteers that are on our, our committee, around the table is great to work with. People in the industry, I mean, we get to facilitate everything from attracting film production to working with the creative and post-production, uh, some of the digital technical companies that are here expanding in Chilliwack. It's a great opportunity to really just understand and try to grow the creative sector here in Chilliwack. That's what it's all about for us here at the Creative Commission. Exactly. So t can you look ahead to, to what we can expect to see in the future? Have you got anything that, that you're going, oh, that's going to be cool, that you can talk about? I think part of, I guess part of, you know, in terms of, of being in, in economic development is, again, is constantly evolving. And I think is really understanding at the grassroots, working with the businesses, where some of the opportunities are and where the growth opportunities are. And I think really, I mean, some of the, the talent we have, like yourself, Jeff Bonner, I mean, working with UFE, Sandra, I mean, we have a wealth of, of really creative talent in our community. And really is trying to make that, I guess we're part of SAPCO and what we do is kind of that connection piece, kind of like a puzzle. Where, where are the dots in terms of knowing who can help and help facilitate? And even like this facility with Creative Third Thursday, Launch Stories, bringing some great entrepreneurs to tell their story and how, you know, it's it's not easy being an entrepreneur and some of the challenges being in business. But again, this is a great community and we've really seen the growth over the 25 years. Yeah. And you can find out more about what's going on with SEPCO by going to businessinchilliwack.com. We have two websites. And? Um, business in Chilliwack uh, and Life in Chilliwack. Life in Chilliwack. So yeah. Life in Chilliwack is also gives a really, in terms of, you know, in terms of the amenities, the neighborhoods. So it's a really two good complimentary uh, website, everything you need to know about Chilliwack. You did a great job, Nettie. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks for, thanks for <laughs> filling in. <laughs> Nettie Tam, everybody. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jeff. So our next guest at this impromptu Creative Third Thursday is a photographer that I work with myself. I'm, we're booking a session myself with, with Alex. Yes. I'm also here for taking photos tonight for Tim. So uh, in honor of this, on the count of three, one, two, three. Perfect. <laughs> you guys got that for free. <laughs> So tell us a little bit what's going on in your life lately. We we talked we caught caught up with you last year. Um, yeah. So tell us uh, what's new. Yeah, um, it is springtime now officially, which means people are waking up a little bit, uh, which means there's a lot of events and project ideas, um, businesses that are starting to kind of reach out and ask for work to be done, which is super exciting. Um, I'm officially in month three of taking this full time. Um, I kind of explained it at the last Creative Third Thursday, but 
I've been shooting for most of my adult life. Like I, I turned 30 in a couple of months, which is crazy. And I was looking back on my 20s and there was a camera in my hand for almost every year of my 20s. Um, so to be able to take it full time has been pretty cool. And uh, I feel good about the spring and summer. It kind of feels like things are starting to, for lack of a better term, bloom. Mm -hmm. So, What do you think are going to be, well, looking ahead, what, uh, what direction is your <clears throat> photography going in? Is, is it self-guided direction or is it it's kind of leading uh, with where the opportunities unfold? Yeah, um, right now it's leading kind of where the opportunities are unfolding. Um, I'm kind of intentionally going jack of all trades and trying to pick up as many different skills as I can and types of photography to become knowledgeable in. Um, but my long-term vision has been one I've kind of held for a long time. I have a background in geography and community planning, and when I had that, um, I had a, you know, I had this invested interest in being close to the community that I was working in, and um, wanted to work at it from more of a planning perspective at that point. But I've transitioned that towards my camera and storytelling, and the long-term goal is I kind of what Nettie had mentioned. There's so much talent growing in, up in Chilliwack right now in the Fraser Valley in general. And as it grows and evolves and cultivates, I want to be there capturing those stories and documenting and most importantly, like celebrating all the work that's happening and those stories that are emerging from our community. Um, so it's really taking that community, that passion for community I fostered in my professional academic life and transitioning that into my camera and storytelling. So uh, when, when I interviewed you last, uh, last year, mm -hmm. um, we talked about what a cool event Creative Third Thursdays is. And I like the, the way you spoke about it. What do you think of Creative Third Thursdays from your perspective? Because we're, you know, I'm, I'm the old white haired guy <laughs> and I'm hosting no. it. <laughs> but but you're, you're a guy in your 20s and you come to Creative Third Thursdays. Mm -hmm. what, what can you say that would make more people younger people embarking on a creative career uh, yeah. interested in coming here. What, do you, what is it you get from coming to Creative Third Thursdays? Yeah, I think growing up, um, being creative was always something you kind of did in your after hours. It was something you kind of did to unwind it for fun. It was never really a pursuit that you thought you could take full time. Um, when I started coming to co-work and you know, you'll know, you see me in the corner photographing and covering nights like this, it totally opened my eyes to how much support and excitement there is about the creative community here. And it feels like it just continues growing. And I've made some really great connections both at these events and at co-work in general. And knowing that there's people who love being creative and love storytelling and love their own mediums as much as I love mine, it has been super validating. And I would love to keep seeing more and more energy come. But right now it feels like one of the places to come and just meet like-minded people. Cool. Yeah. And how can we find out more about what you're doing and uh, connect with you online? Yeah, um, I'm most active on good old Instagram, uh, just Hart Alex, my last name, first name. And I have a website, which is alexhartphotography.com. And that's kind of my portfolio for the different um, clients I work with and the different projects I've done. But um, yeah, reach out to me on Instagram, I think is usually the easiest. Check out my website if you want to. I'm always down for that. Cool. But, yeah. Alex Hart, everybody. <laughs> So our next guest is uh, the editor of the Chilliwack newspaper called the Chilliwack Progress. And I met Jess years ago, and uh, she's recently taken on the position of the editor of the Progress. And uh, I thought, I've, I've been watching her quite intensely on social media. She handles social media very well. And I thought, well, there's some things that we can learn as a creative community from somebody that is in traditional media. So Jess Peters, everybody. Yes. Yeah. So, um, thanks for having me. I know. Um, well, this is going to be... The, thanks, Joy. We're just going to do a prelude. <laughs> yes. So... Because uh, I've had on my mind what we're going to talk about. Yes. And I've been, you know, speaking about storytelling. I think everybody here understands how your brain starts to work and you start to think, how am I going to, how am I going to weave this into, what am I going to bring to this conversation? And, um, and then I kind of put it off, off to the side. And then when I heard you say to somebody in the green or like over in the mingling time that um, you might have me come up. My brain's been going trying to like really wind up that stuff really, really fast. But uh, um, 
So maybe we could just start by you asking me some questions. Okay, so uh, this is the question that comes to mind. Um, and, I, and I don't need you uh, to give me an extended answer to this, because this is something you, we can think about and talk about when we actually do the, you as a featured creative on Creative Third Thursday Next in April. month. Next yes. month. Yes. So, uh, what, but in a, in a nutshell, uh, how can our creative audience, the people that come to Creative Third Thursdays, benefit from traditional media? Because everybody thinks that social media is everything. Uh, well, I shouldn't say everybody thinks that. I've been thinking that for a long time. So social media is like, it's a really important part of, of, of getting the word it's out a about, tough question about what this, we do. In this climate. Yeah. So, so what, what, can, what can this audience learn from uh, a traditional media perspective? At how to how to get their story out there? Hmm. So that is a very tough question because it's something that we battle with because we have to be doing all of the things and we we're expected as the longstanding media. Um, you know, we've been in the, we've been in the business since 1891 here in Chilliwack, and um, so we're kind of upset that they named it 1881, but uh, we'll get over it. <laughs> and um, so. Um, so we're expected to be on the forefront of all of these things that change. And we don't even call ourselves um, a newspaper company anymore. We call ourselves a media company because we have embraced, we feel like we've embraced um, a lot of the new social media. And, you know, we're, we're learning about video and we're, we're trying to catch up. But we're, we're expected to be at the forefront, but we're not. Um, <laughs> My bosses don't see this. But, um, but as far as traditional media, I mean, what, it, what we provide is like in-depth understanding of our community and, um, and storytelling that we find compelling that is informed by the past and looking to the future. And we're just not out there looking for a quick hit and the fancy thing and to get, you know, whoever's got the ad money that day, we have the resources and the, we have, we have the resources. We have the resources to um, carry through some droughts and, and, um, and we're able to sort of be the consistent storyteller. Um, we're not going anywhere. We're, we've been here for ages. We have our, we have, um, you know, over a hundred years of archives to pull from to find out where we've been as a community. And, and we do that quite often, almost on a weekly basis. And yeah, to me, like, to me, um, traditional community newspapers, not, not um, you know, big media, you know, the bigger media houses, may, maybe not so much. Um, I feel like we have a really deep connection to the people in the community. And, and you know, especially Chilliwack is is so lucky and I, and I wish people really understood this. I started there when Nettie Tam and I came actually to town almost exactly the same time. We're both celebrating 25 years in business in Chilliwack this year. Um, I came here in 1999, I applied to the Chilliwack Times and the Chilliwack Progress. Um, the Chilliwack Progress took a chance on me and I stuck with them. I've been with them, with that company since ever since. Um, and where was I going with that? Um, where was I going with that? You think that? you were talking about the, the growth that you've seen? <laughs> hey, Tim, cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> we could. Um, I think you were talking about the growth that you've seen and, and yeah, how things have evolved. We've in, really in that seen. Of time. So, so I've been there for 25 years. Jennifer Feinberg's been there for 25 years. Jenna Houck's been there for 25 years. Like we're all celebrating. You know, just between the three of us, we have 75 years of journalism experience in that newsroom. Yeah. And that is a remarkable thing. You know, we sit around some days and, you know, we can be, we can be um, silly and goofy and, and uh, have just so much fun. But when it really comes down to it and something's happening in this town, we drop everything and we, we know exactly our role to play. You know, we, we, you know, I might be desking, what we call desking, which is sitting at the desk gathering all the information um, from the reporters out in the field and like putting everything out onto the web right away. And, and we know where the people want the information. We know exactly what they want. We know what they need. Um, the, we have these strong, long-time relationships with the RCMP, with the fire detachments, with the police, 
the city, the RCMP, the police, um, with the city of Chilliwack and, and with people like Nettie and, and, um, and all, all people all through the community. Um, and we know exactly how to get that information and, and spill it back out. We're information, information synthesizers, and we, we take in the information really quickly and we spit it back out in a way that people can digest it. So, so it's a lot of information, like it's a lot of training that sort of goes unnoticed. And then sometimes people come in and they think, well, I can do this too. I can, I can start a blog. And Yeah, but I think my question really is like for, for people, like they, they're putting on an event, like, like Tractor Grease does, mm, for instance. Mm-hmm. Or, or how can, do they have to purchase advertising or is there a story mm. related to it? So we always look at news value and, um, you know, if, if Tractor Grease wanted a story every week, we would say buy an ad. Yeah. But, you know, uh, you know, we just had, we just did a nice story on Mm -hmm. Jeff and Jeff and Jenna, uh, you know, like the. Oh man. Yeah. uh, (laughs) Yeah. She, we, uh, she took a photo that went best in Canada of Tractor Grease. No. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let's not spill the beans on everything we're going to talk about. Okay, no, let's not. You're going on vacation very quickly here. And I then, am. When you get back, we're going to get together and we're going to shoot a nice yes. bit of B-roll and we'll, we'll make a proper introduction and do a we're proper talk, interview. We're going to talk a little bit about um, some of my own personal writing pursuits, I think. Yes. We're going to talk a little bit about what I'm working on yeah. um, outside of the newsroom. And we'll talk a little bit more maybe about news if yeah. you want. And maybe and, your camping year a little bit. And my camping year... Did you say year or gear? Year. Because I'm a light camper. I don't have a lot of gear to talk no, about. You're, but, you're, <laughs> but camping's going to be your thing this year. Yes, camping okay. is my so thing. So let's stop it right there. Because we're we're going to talk all about that creativity. Yeah. We'll spill all the beans. Playing some guitar around the campfire. Yeah, I could Baritone be. ukulele. Thank oh, you very much. <laughs> so where can people, obviously, the those progress. people at, at home, how can the people at home connect with what you do? So um, please uh, log on to theprogress.com. We can't share our stories right now through Meta because of the ban, but um, we haven't gone anywhere. We're right on our website, just as you, if you could think back to 2005 when you had The Progress as your home site, we would love if you would do that to your computers again. Visit us every day. And, um, and you can always still share stories all sorts of ways. Um, you can email me at editor at theprogress.com. You can find me on Twitter, but I'm not there very often anymore. And you can always pop into the Chilliwack Progress office and say hi to us. Jess Peters, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to read the wrap. Uh, Creative Third Thursdays is a Chilliwack Creative Commission event. The Chilliwack Creative Commission is a passionate committee of people who are into uh, making Chilliwack, putting Chilliwack on the creative map, so to speak. So uh, next time as we just alluded to, (laughs) Jess Peters will be our guest. And watch for more of Joy's work around town, and we will reschedule Joy Hall, and we'll have her on this stage at a future future date. So uh, there's cold drinks in the lobby. We can still mingle for a little longer. So cheers, everybody. All right, Jeff.